Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I've Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. Yeah, and welcome to another Monday Mini. And for today's Monday Mini, we're going to play What's Samantha's Diagnosis? Which, y'all, I'm having a moment right now because... I just told Andy, I'm smelling something very floral. I'm trying to figure out why, because I'm in my little cubby. And honestly, this foreign smell is almost like a perfume. So I'm like freaking out. I'm like, am I having a stroke? I'm concerned. I don't think so. And if you see me doing things, please let me know. Oh this might be an odd episode. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think so. <laughs> but I mean, I say all this kiddingly, but I mean... I'm not going to lie. When I say I might go look on TikTok, I might go look on TikTok. Honestly, as much as I love TikTok, there are so many things that TikTok have told me that I'm starting to get really concerned about a lot of things. And as in fact, I've also learned about conditions that I didn't know existed and feeling like maybe that's part of my problem because I really feel like there's something off all the time. And when I say something off, as in like something's imbalanced in my body, and it could be that I'm going through perimenopause, which we're going to talk about in a later date, because I'm like, what is that? And mm-hmm. have I entered that? And what does that look like? As well as uh, maybe it's something that I've always been going through that didn't I did not realize was normal. When I talk to people, I'm like, oh, that's not normal. I found out that people, Asian people, have a gene that makes their earwax different from other people. I was like, what? <laughs> and then I started asking around, like, is this the type of earwax you have? And they're like, yeah. So I was like, what? I love that you asked around about I did. Earwax. I had to. I'm like, white people, tell me what this is. Oh, my god! I gosh. really was having that I mean, moment. you did ask me about I it, did. too. But I, I didn't you. know you asked multiple people. I asked multiple people. <laughs> okay. And, but, like, this is all because of TikTok. And these are things that I'm like, huh. I did not know this. Um, Again, like I said, because I'm watching these things and these things are popping up on my For You page, I started to become a little concerned with all of the similarities I've seemed to be having with all of these mental and medical health things that I'm like, what? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And with that, I began to wonder if others were feeling and noticing this Two, uh, and yes, there are article after article with similar questions, and even ones concerned on how it's affecting the youth today. Uh, but I will say we're going to go back and forth a bit on this for a minute because it also is one of those moments of like we need things like this to be taken seriously. There are two different perspectives, obviously, with this. One, it's a good thing because it brings awareness to mental health and physical health. For those who've been gaslit by the medical field, uh, you can see why women, you can see our episode about why women are not believed by the medical professionals and even our episode on women with autism and ADHD and how misdiagnosed that is for women specifically and for those in the Black community specifically, like for those in the marginalized community, how often this is misdiagnosed or not diagnosed at all or just disregarded altogether. And the information on on how to be taken seriously by their doctors has been validating and even life-saving to the point that, yes, I know doctors are really, 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 really upset with WebMD and getting more so with TikTok because people are like, I saw this on TikTok. I Googled this on WebMD. And yes, I think that uh, TikTok has become the new WebMD, which many have talked about recently. I saw a Reddit post about it, like, it's just the new WebMD and people complaining about it. I'm like, it's kind of true. But we talked about before, Annie, how TikTok has become one of the best <laughs> or the bigger search engines mm. for people today. Like instead of going to Google, they're going to TikTok. Um, and I wonder if that's partially because not only did Google get bought out essentially by people who wanted their content to be at the top or who can do this and who has the more money, companies, big corporate companies coming in. And for a while, TikTok was not like that. It has drastically changed. Please see previous episodes with Bridget about consumer stuff as well as influencer stuff and who's getting bought out. We could talk about this uh, genocide that is currently occurring and influencers who are being bought out by pro-specific sides, I guess you can say. In a, like They've been called out. They've talked about big lobbyists going after politicians to try to run against other politicians that they did not like their agenda. We've known this happened with NRA, but they're actually using TikTok and social media influences like that and buying people out like that. So we know 
that TikTok has changed, unfortunately, from what it was originally, when you could get more probably genuine, I guess, posts, whether it's people talking about their own experiences with whatever diagnosis they may have or whatever uh, physical ailment they may have and being able to understand what it is. And for a lot of people figuring out, oh, that's what's been happening with me. POTS, P-O-T-S, Postural tachycardia syndrome, and I hope I said that right, uh, which is POTS, which has like dizziness or lightheadedness, fainting or almost fainting, noticeable heartbeats or heart palpitations, chest pains, shortness of breath, shaking and sweating. Those are some of the symptoms. I'm wondering if I need to question my doctor about that because I definitely have fainted. Not a lot. Because I've seen people with uh, severe POTS who faint constantly. Like, they have to have a service dog because this dog can feel it. But a lot of those, I'm like, yeah, I do that. That's not normal. Not everybody does that. I thought we all did that. Mm -hmm. So there's, like, different questions. So things like that can be really, really helpful and life-saving. In a 2022 Time article titled, For Some Women with ADHD, TikTok is the first place they felt heard. So uh, they talk about how TikTok has been amazing for them, um, for the women who have figured this out. And here's a quote from a woman who discovered her diagnosis after researching and finding videos on TikTok. For many women who see these videos in their feed, it's the first time they've learned about some of the symptoms of ADHD beyond the most widely known hyperactive and trouble focusing. Quote, as an overachieving child who got good grades, ADHD was never on my radar, Lays told Time in, the, in an email. I was shocked to discover through TikTok that my experiences were consistent with ADHD. Uh, and she's not the only one. We talked about this before. So many like her finally had terms and definitions for things that she was doing that were on a clinical level, such as masking um, or even uh, mis being misdiagnosed, concluding that women were quiet due to being shy or even less intelligent instead of seeing that they were being inattentive due to ADHD and was incorrectly diagnosed or was told that's not a diagnosis of ADHD, which, again, we've talked about it previously. We've had guest Kate, who was amazing talking about her eye diagnosis of ADHD and what that looks like for women and why it's so hard, even today. But the message is spreading and social media has been a big part of that. TikTok specifically has been a huge part of that. There's also the awareness that helps destigmatize a mental health diagnosis. Um, more people are able to talk about their experiences and talk about what they did and even how they were finally able to get people to listen to them, which helped others uh, along the way. Um, there were several articles about how it's destigmatizing mental health for men and helping men get help or realizing that they need help and what that help can do for them. So that's those are some amazing things that have occurred on TikTok specifically. But in an article written about teenagers and TikTok uh, from CNN, they talk about the good and the bad. Um, and some parents feel as it has helped them with their teens. And um, here's a quote from that. Julie Fulcher from Raleigh, North Carolina, said she began following ADHD influencers who were able to better explain behaviors, impulsivities, and how the condition is related to executive functioning so she can help her daughter navigate her diagnosis. Uh, meanwhile, Another person from upstate New York feels mixed about her daughter using social media for reasons related to her autism diagnosis. She's doing a lot of self-discovery right now in so many areas, and social media is a big part of that, she said. I know social media gets a bad rap, but in her case, it's hard to tell sometimes if the pros outweigh the cons. Um, and it goes on. Many adults appear to credit social media with helping them identify lifelong mental health struggles. One person, a 35-year-old professional photographer, says she sought guidance from a professional after seeing videos pop up on her TikTok for you page about ADHD. Okay, this For You page really has me thinking, and I've, I've made this statement, and I'm not trying to be um, ableist or any of that. I'm not making light of it. I'm like, maybe I am on the spectrum. Because at this point in time, I'm having a rough time with these types of uh, cognitive functioning, social functioning. And I'm like, what is this? But let's be very honest. When it comes down to coming out of the pandemic, getting older, getting tired, things change. And not that I couldn't be on the spectrum. I could get that diagnosis. But that the more you hear things, the more you start kind of convincing yourself, yes. That's me, which for some is very helpful. For others, it could go down like 
a dangerous route. It's, again, like I'm saying, it's like I'm smelling things. What is happening? <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's why I seem to be okay. Annie, would you agree? I would, but, you know, I'm <laughs> keeping an eye out. I'm keeping an please, eye out. Please keep an eye out. <laughs> um, but again, that same article about teenagers, uh, they talk about how there's uh, the ups and downs. But it seems with even more risk with the self-diagnosing. So from that article, uh, it says, A growing number of teens are turning to social media, such as Instagram and TikTok, for guidance, resources, and support for their mental health to find conditions that they think match their own. A trend that has alarmed parents, therapists, school counselors, according to interviews with CNN. Some teens start to follow creators who discuss their own mental health conditions, symptoms, and treatments. Others have come across posts with symptom checklists to help decide if they meet the criteria for a diagnosis. And it continues, however, many parents and experts expressed concerns over how self-diagnosing and mislabeling could exacerbate teens' behaviors, make them feel isolated, and be counterproductive in giving them the help they need. In a worst-case scenario, teens could set themselves on a path to receiving medication for a condition they do not have. And once teens search for this mental health content, the algorithms may keep surfacing similar videos and posts. Some parents and therapists have found that once teens decide they have a condition, it can be hard to convince them otherwise. Again, and in, there, the, in the article, there are some theories as to why this is growing bigger for teens. It says, some experts believe teens may be over-identifying with a specific label or diagnosis, even if it is not a fully accurate representation of their struggles, because a diagnosis can be a shield or justification of behavior in social situations. Quote, with the amounting pressure that young people face to be socially competitive, those teens with more significant insecurities may feel that they will never measure up, said a psychologist in New York. She goes on, a teen may rely on diagnosis to lower other expectations of their abilities. Of course, this might be a boomer take, (laughs) and I say this nicely to all the boomers, but that idea of like, in my days, we never had these things. And so dismissing people with those diagnoses because as a person just just a random person being out here in the world as well as uh, working in the social social work world uh and with mental health everyone has something like i think it would be incorrect to say that there is normalcy like some there is a diagnosis for everyone whether it is by social uh pressure or whether it's by uh, mental health, biology, environment, any of those things do come on. We know PTSD uh, is a big thing, and especially a lot of us feeling that pressure just from the pandemic, uh, from recession. All of these things have a name. There's a level of anxiety that everybody is going through. There's a level of depression that most people have gone through, especially during the holidays. Like it, it, it's there. And for teenagers who also watch social media on a constant or on social media on a constant, like that that level is pretty high. So I think that it's it would be disrespectful to to dismiss teens in general saying you've been looking at too or anybody you've been looking at too much social media because that's part of the problem to begin with. You know, when we go up one step, back three steps type of conversations, mental health could be a part of that as well in that too much diagnosis. We had that with the when medications were finally coming out and people started talking about needing medication, that being too medicated. And I think that's a, that's a true story. I've seen that where kids being diagnosed with the simplest things or being forced to be diagnosed with the simplest things so they could sedate kids, um, which I thought was hor- horrible. Like I saw kids on... Um, ADHD medication because they wouldn't go to sleep. I was like, what is happening? Why are we putting them on a prescribed medication for that? So there's definitely this level that I've seen. But when it comes to social media, there is this back and forth of like, how much is too much? Uh, Is this too much information given to kids who are smart enough to know the system and work the system? And I say work the system, I'm one of those people. I can manipulate into a diagnosis. I've done it as someone who was like, but I also did it because I knew that there was something wrong and people were not listening to me and I knew the links that you had to go to to get those medications. So there's this level of like, and it's not, everybody's like, what? It it is this balance because of the system that's been created. You have social media coming in here to let me help you. And that has fed into the TikTok algorithm, which is making TikTok money. 
lots and lots of money. That's also a reminder. It's also those who are the disingenuous bad players who have found that kind of, it's been around, like snake oil salesman. They have found a new platform. And it has worked. So if you can build trust in saying, I know this is what you're going through because I'm going through this and this has helped me, they can sell stuff. Don't get me wrong. I think TikTok has done a great job, especially the followers and the individuals and people in there where they call that out when they find it out. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to see. (laughs) I don't want anybody Mm -hmm. to go down in flames. But at the same time, if you're feeding misinformation to people to make a profit and could be hurting those individuals, yeah, I hope you go down in flames. Mm -hmm. You know, so that all of these things are happening. But this type of rise of teenagers diagnosing themselves has come. As in fact, they all, there was also a trend. I didn't know about this because I guess I'm not as cool as I thought. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> uh, uh, called undiagnosed, where they, the p- kids who have been diagnosed would make jokes about how they were cured now. Um, mm-hmm. And they even use uh, those who had eating disorders. Like one girl joked, I've ate a meal, I'm cured type of conversation. And it's not because they're being disrespectful. They're trying to make a joke, as we have often done for ourselves, about their own condition, trying to joke through it, essentially. But it kind of has fed into this, like, misinformation to other teens where it can lead to a bad, harmful pattern where they backtrack and say, I can solve this myself. Now, that's not always the case. Again, a lot of them are doing this in like a tongue-in-cheek way, but it's coming off as, "Mm, this actually may be a bad trend Mm -hmm. for other teens. (sighs) Again, there's also those who actually think TikTok has trivialized their their actual diagnosis. So there, there was a writer who has been diagnosed with autism, who talks about that specifically of like, okay, everybody's joking now that because they don't like loud sounds, that's autism, you know, and and that's the spectrum. And not that it can't be, once again, but to put it lightly and making a joke, very ableist, but trying to accept it at the same time because you see it on TikTok, it's kind of that balance of like, okay, but how much have we put into this content that is now trivializing those who have struggled all of their lives with that diagnosis, with actually being diagnosed, and may have this, like, be on the further spectrum of autism. We're not going to talk about Sia in any way, but if you kind of look at what she did with that and how she did both of those things, not only did she almost made it, like, graphically over the top, where it was all the caricatures of uh, people who have autism or who are on the spectrum, to trivializing it, to make it excuses for others. It's kind of just like, mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But is this partly because social media has also bled into that as well? And yes, I have been on autism uh, the spectrum TikTok and they, you know, and ADHD TikTok and the overlapping is like over the top. And then this whole conversation about being neurodivergent versus uh, neurotypical, which again came to my conversation of like, but there's no such thing as really anybody being neurotypical. If we really look down into what society has kind of created in itself, whether it's the anxiety or the push or the depression, like and PTSD in itself and the trauma. In itself, like, it's kind of like, does that actually exist? So I don't know. So that term, that over blanketing term is an interesting term to me. Again, I know I'm not I'm not saying I'm a professional in any way, but just seeing what it is, if we come to realization that the norm is actually being neurodivergent, Mm -hmm. it seems. But the spectrum does change. And then the respect that we give those terms are really important. And yeah, a lot of the articles that I've seen that we've talked about talk about that terminology is really, really, really important, mainly because it does differentiate from a true diagnosis versus a false diagnosis, I guess. One of the things they talk about is high functioning. That is not a clinical term, Mm -hmm. which is also why that's kind of been banned and we've talked about the spectrum Mm -hmm. in itself. Yeah. Again, a big reminder, people make money off this content. They can make tons of money just by having a certain amount of views and accruing a lot of uh, followers. Again, there's some amazing content creators who do good things. There's a lot of bad players as well. So what are some things that we can do to lessen this issue? I guess I could just get off TikTok. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. I really like the dog videos. And right now I'm following Neil the Seal 
elephant seal down in Australia. Have you seen anything about Neil the seal? Do you know what I'm, I'm not, talking about? Not on TikTok, but I, yeah. yes. Yeah. Isn't it interesting when you're like, how do you find things? <laughs> how do you find things? <laughs> I it's, been I far, it's been fantastic. That's just one creator. I think it goes by JC, J-A-Y-C-E-E. And I think he works with uh, like the uh, government to try to keep uh, Neil safe. But he's just like, Neil, <laughs> those people need to go to work. Get off their lawn. Like, it's just fantastic content. <laughs> fantastic content, okay? <laughs> but some other ways to look at it outside of just getting off of TikTok. And this came from the University of Colorado's medical school. They said, look at credentials. Uh, who is giving advice or posting? What's their background? And I know people can put whatever they want because there's been several call outs for people who said they're doctors or in the medical field and it turns out they're not. Mm. But actually trying to see if you can research deep enough. Like you, you usually those who are in the profession will show you credentials because they realize how important that is. So look for that. Um, look at the data being presented. Are they throwing a lot of words together? Again, like high functioning and all these things. Like you've got to talk about where this is coming from. Look for resources. Ask them for resources. And then following that up, realizing there's no such thing as quick fixes. Mm -hmm. Saw content about someone saying this is the over-the-counter Adderall drug. Y'all, <laughs> be careful. Just, just be careful. And they even talked about how to fix or recalculate your For You page. So if you're following some content creators that are specialized to that, if you unfollow them, sometimes that'll help. For me, I don't follow those content creators, but I still get it. There is a way... And I think you just need to Google or actually you can look it up in TikTok to completely wipe off your For You uh, algorithm and it starts over again. Mm -hmm. So there is a way to do that. But I've discovered, as so is my partner, just us talking about something, that stuff will pop up. Yeah. At a, yeah. Like, it's not that we we'll look at it, we don't look it up, anything. It's just that we're talking about it. So that tells you we know we're being watched. Yeah. I'm not even that. I'm not even that cool. Stop watching me. <laughs> but there's ways to do that. You can also go through and report and, and say you're not interested because I've done that oftentimes. So you can get off of those type of contents. But yeah, there's this whole back and forth about how well this is going for our society. I'm calling this Dr. TikTok because, again, like WebMD, I, 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 I start falling in that rhythm of like, maybe this is what's wrong with me. But at the same time, it may not be inaccurate and it does validate how I feel. I still think I'm narcoleptic. Thanks, TikTok. Also, listeners, some li listeners have written into you. About yeah, that. they said that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, all the listeners are like, these are the diagnoses we'd give you. You may want to go see a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and that's just a reminder that if these things are in question, it's okay to ask. Don't act on it. Don't try to self-medicate. Don't do all these things. Don't make it your excuse necessarily. But trying to get a diagnosis, going to a doctor, saying these are the following things. Maybe not say, I got, I got this off of TikTok. <laughs> I have a feeling the eye roll will be, they'll, they'll probably know anyway. Yeah. They'll probably know anyway. But in general, just be like, these are the things I'm concerned with. These are the things I didn't know was normal. Can you help me? It was not normal, rather, in, in your physical health. Like being dizzy and passing out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the, I, again, like you kept saying throughout this, I feel like that's the balance of it. Because pre-TikTok, I've had multiple people in my life come up to me and say, like, the episode you did about women and autism changed my life. Because we don't talk about it because it has been historically ignored or misdiagnosed. And so it's both, it's like, it is good that we're talking about it more and we're seeing more things and people are like, oh, okay, maybe it's that, maybe it's that. I know when somebody, I think it was you told me like having the, at the back of my neck, I have a very strange thing about that with shirts and hair. Um, and it, it is like, oh, okay. So that's not like a completely normal thing. But it is also, yes, you I mean, I could, I, feel, I always joke WebMD is like a horoscope. I could read it and be like, I probably have this. And it could be <laughs> nothing close to what I have. Like, so it, it is like a, it's good. It's bringing awareness, but it is important to know where it's coming from and to do further research uh, before you're, you self-medicate or self-diagnose. So, yeah, 
It's just both, you know? Well, when you said that, the horoscoping thing, actually, there was an, one article that talked about the horoscope effect. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's what is called people read symptoms online or hear someone discuss the their experience and feel connected to it so much so that they will now believe they may have the same diagnosis, the bold, bold proclamations as of like predicting it or something along the lines. But yeah, apparently that is a, a whole theory within psychologists when well, it comes I, to predicting or the disorder thanks to TikTok. I just feel like a lot of times we all do it. But uh, there are some symptoms that are just common amongst a lot of things. Right. And for me, one of them is my heart beats really fast. Um, not all the time, but sometimes. And it, it's fast. Yeah. And that is just a symptom amongst all the so things. many things. And it could just be, and I fingers crossed suspect it is, I'm anxious. <laughs> right. Um, but if I go on to WebMD, it's like, what is this? You <laughs> have this. a 90% blockage. You're dying. <laughs> yes, which, which we, you could. Yeah, but we can't negate that exactly. because women, more women die than men every year of, of a heart attack or heart-related uh, fatalities. So part exactly. of this is like being told we're being paranoid, but at the same time, it's actually true because no one listens. And what which part do we listen to? And right. it should be better safe than sorry, but we as women have been so shamed yep. to be healthy that we're, we are afraid to go to doctors half the time. Yes. And it costs money and it takes time. Yes. Um, so it, it's like and really unfortunate. Some people's health care is really bad. Yes. Yes, it is. But it's, yeah, so I think it's like more complicated than saying like one side is bad or, or I don't know. Right. It's just, it's it's more nuanced than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, uh, thank you for bringing this to us, Samantha. I believe we're going to talk about so many in an episode coming up about why you were thinking about this. But our, our yes. calendar is in flux, so we'll see. But I think I this is so. going to be ahead of this. Mm -hmm. But yes, we'll talk about why. Why you were thinking about this, yes. All right. <laughs> well, in the meantime, you can contact us, listeners, if you have any thoughts about this. Our email is stephaniemomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at Momstuff Podcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Steph Never Told You. We have a tea public store and we do have a book. Yes. And thanks as always to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.